Today, I'm joined by the incredible Peter Thomas Roth, founder, CEO, and formulator of his best-selling skincare brand, and his son, Ryan Thomas Roth, influencer and brand partnerships manager. And this is our first ever father and son duo on Founder Beauty. So I'm so excited for this one. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, welcome to Founder Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable and Main has been an incredible journey so far and I decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or you're simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. Now without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guests for today, Peter Thomas Roth and Ryan Thomas Roth. Peter Thomas Roth is a CEO, founder, and lead formulator of Peter Thomas Roth Clinical Skin Care, and his son, Ryan, is the manager of influencers and brand partnerships in the brand. I love that this is a story inspired by family from the outset, as skincare was a huge part of Peter's Hungarian sparse heritage. Inspired by the healing muds and minerals used since the 1800s in his family's spa resorts in Hungary, Peter launched his brand in 1993 and continues to lead all research and development. Today, celebrating a 30-year anniversary, it remains a best-selling brand at Sephora and counts Margot Robbie, Kim Kardashian, and Selena Gomez as fans. It's also truly a groundbreaking line with its formula-driven approach, using modern technologies and potent ingredients for the most effective skin solutions. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. So, Peter, Ryan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. You said it all. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have to I have to say it was very hard to narrow all the amazing things you guys have done, but I hopefully I did it justice. But we'll get to the rest of the stuff in this podcast. But before I do, I, uh, I do have my opening question I ask all my guests. I'm going to ask Peter first and then I'll ask you, Ryan. Peter, who are you in a nutshell? Oh, in a nutshell? I have no idea. I'm... <laughs> skincare busy during the day i'm a dad i uh i don't know i try and go out and have fun all the time i just keeping busy in a very busy city that's all we can ask that's all we can do right but i love that and, and ryan who are you in a nutshell um i guess here and in work i I'm a little bit of a mini peter which is fun and exciting so i get to be kind of the Gen Z millennial version of Peter and bring that voice and opinion to the brand while of course in and out of work having fun in in life together and enjoying my time but really I guess skincare is just so in my DNA this brand yeah. predates me so in my DNA who I am is just all skincare one of I've been using our anti-aging cleansing gel since kindergarten. It's my, I don't necessarily advise uh, um, our consumers to be giving our salicylic acid cleanser to their five-year-olds, but it's been just all of these products have been part of my DNA my whole life. So it really is a huge part of who I am. Oh, the other thing is you don't give it to a kid because they have to show you. This is what they do. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is so funny. They take a bottle like this, right? Yeah. And then, well, and go, we want to wash your hair? And a little two-year-old go, sure, boom, the whole thing comes out. And that's it. That's uh, it's the funniest half, thing. The bottle, Actually, when we used to have, gone. like, yeah. those cute little Disney ones, which we used to buy all the time, <laughs> and, like, lasted one one bath. Oh, that's and it. You just squeeze it all out. Because you just squeeze it all out. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> So well, don't give your kids expensive products in the bathroom. Exactly. It's, um, I mean, I grew up in a family household. My dad is uh, in the beauty industry for 40 years on the fragrance side. But uh, we were quite lucky because my mom, well, I wasn't lucky, but technically for the product's sake, we're lucky because my mom is allergic to fragrance. So we weren't allowed any fragrances at home. So I guess I didn't have an issue of 
having fragrances and just spraying it everywhere. But um, it is something that uh, it's it's funny to see kind of like how, yeah, childhood memories have now come into brands today. So that's something we have very in common is family. And, and uh, yeah, it's something that you don't, don't often see in beauty brands today. But I do want to ask you, what's it like working with your family? So I'm going to start with Ryan. What's it like working with your dad? <laughs> It, it's a lot of fun, honestly. And I mean, w when you're doing something that you love, there is no work-life balance. But when you're working with family, there's definitely no work-life balance. Yeah. So the, the dinner table conversations, the late night conversations, there's always business weaved into the mix. But yeah. I love what I do. We both love what we do. So in terms of that, it's fantastic. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. You take you take the baggage from work home and you take the baggage from home to work. So yeah. with that, it can always be um, a little bit challenging, but we're both um, pretty easy and have a great relationship with each other. So it's easy to work together. That's great. Uh, oh, Peter, I'm sure you echo the sentiment. but Yeah, and also with COVID, you don't see each other at work. <laughs> exactly. We have like what, one or two days in the office, everything's at home. So it's not like nine to five like literally down the hall from each other. It's not like it was with my dad. I was in the same room with him. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Not in, in jewelry, not in skincare, but he was there and I was here from 8.15. Worst, 8.15. <laughs> oh the bell went at 8.30. Yeah. yeah. But, no, so it wasn't worse. It was just like, but it was nice. I had lunch with my dad every single day. Yeah. Every single day. So I do want to actually talk about maybe um, starting a bit more of the podcast uh, with uh, Peter and about sort of your upbringing and the links from the inspiration from your father growing up in Hungary. Can you tell us about that and eventually what led you to start your own skincare brand? Um, I was in the jewelry business with my dad and I had pimples and acne <clears throat> and I always... Um, like skincare, but I always needed skincare. So I was always at the department store, the drug store, the dermatologist, because I had zits all the time getting them injected and removed and whatever. So I kind of fell into it as a hobby. Um, and then everyone started buying it. And I was like, oh my God, this hobby turned into like a real business. Then I still get acne, it's terrible. <laughs> It's yeah, we can't control. But but I mean, was there a reason like you realized people were so interested in? Like, what was like the first iconic formula product that people were starting to get hooked onto? I mean, we had, I think, twenty ten glycolic acid for wrinkles and ten uh, for acne. So it was, uh, <coughs> it was pretty much an acne one at the beginning. Half yeah, wrinkles and or acne, you choose. <laughs> yeah, and then it, and acne is like you know people with acne have to you know, use the product all the time. Then they didn't have um, that um, Accutane as much then. You know, it was just kind of new. Or they didn't have it at all. Yeah. Can't even remember. But I think what you really innovated in, which is so different in the space, and especially at that time didn't exist, is you can see, you can see one of our products in the background, nice and mm -hmm. big there. But um, all of our products have a lot of words on the bottle and there's a lot of ingredients first. We're an ingredient first brand. We're not heavily fragranced when there's no need to be fragranced. And that's the difference. The landscape of the skincare industry in the early um, to mid nineties was very thick, heavy creams, fragrance. And there was a lot of um, unknown about what was in the packaging. So mm. what Peter, my dad really set forth to do is bring the ingredients to the front of the box so you know what's in your products and that's i think what made the brand really stick and kind of guide the the beauty and skincare industry as a whole yeah no one was doing that they were just saying like ultra making this name up ultra night cream repair whatever yeah. um but you don't know what was in it but you know the heavily advertised products sold and, and also the european brands they still are heavily fragranced you guys like fragrance over there yeah, and the Americans uh, are less like fragrance. No, so uh, so we don't fragrance anything unless we need to fragrance it. Oh, just because that's we just that's how we differ. Yeah. Also, but yeah, no one put the ingredients on. Yeah, and I think also there was a sense of I think now there's so much education and the consumer is so much more aware of what these ingredients are. So it's also today fast forwarding it many years. 
it's sort of like a must, it's a demand. And I think it's great that it shows how ahead of the curve you guys were by putting it on at that time when probably not many did. Um, but did you find it hard at the beginning to educate? Because I don't know if many people knew what half those ingredients were, you know. At, at the beginning, everyone, we had benzoyl peroxide. Now we switched to salicylic acid, but we had benzoyl peroxide and glycolic acid. And kind of every, those are the two buzzwords. They all knew. We didn't have all the peptides, you know, when we started. It was just those two ingredients. And glycolic was really hot. It was brand new. Okay. But um, what I wanted to ask actually was Sephora, because now you're entering a landscape where you have a huge diversity of consumers, right? Some coming in from makeup, skincare, hair care, et cetera. What was that journey like? And how did you launch in Sephora? Um, yeah, tell us a story. That's well, a, such that, a good story. Tell that. that was an easy, 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 easy story. Uh, we used to sell, we had like a hundred dollar minimum. And we used to sell to estheticians and go, okay, you're $92. You want to buy another sunblock to get you over the hill? Oh, I don't know if I need another sunblock. This is how it went. I go, no, 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 we have to do 100. You know, okay, we'll do 92. Yeah. And then this, this wonderful guy, he passed away, Sashi, Sashi, I forgot his last name, Bennett, Ben, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, he said, oh, we're coming from Sephora. I'd like to come up to your showroom. <coughs> we're in Rockefeller Center. I didn't know what Sephora was. Sephora at that time only had one store in Paris and I hadn't been to Paris in, since I was like 16. So, um, and then, so like he comes in and he goes, we had, let's say that at that time we were already up to like 60 products. He goes, Oh, we'll take, um, like a hundred of everything. <laughs> and I go, everything. <laughs> okay. You hit, you definitely hit your hundred dollar minimum. So we started with the first Sephora in Rockefeller Center back in 98. And then um, the good news is for us as we grew with Sephora, the, the hard part for new brands is <laughs> you have like a lot of Sephoras to navigate at the moment um, if, you, if you're a new brand. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's just more challenging for newer brands. It's not impossible at all, but it's challenging and support is very helpful for new brands. It's not like, don't get worried about it. It's just a totally different when you, when you go from one store to three stores to 10 stores. And then, you know, we had one field person and we had two field people, you know, it's a whole different game plan. But it was cool because at the time from, you know, what I know, all the brands that existed at, um, weren't really allowed to go into Sephora. They had exclusive with their department stores. So Sephora picked all these cool indie brands with interesting stories mm -hmm. that they could pick from that weren't in the department stores because they couldn't have any crossover. And now it's so amazing to see how those brands like Peter Thomas Roth have grown so much with Sephora and seen yeah. just such an amazing life cycle that a lot of those brands that stayed with the department stores didn't get to see. And the, the, it was the first time Sephora introduced open sell, which is a huge, huge difference than department store selling. Like they don't have open sell. And in open sell, you have to work because you have to have a lot of words on the bottle. We have to have the right, you know, someone has to help. Even though you get really good um, sales team people at the store, but, um, <clears throat> you know, they're doing the entire store. It's different than when you go into a department store and they're dedicated to the one line. Just a totally different way of selling. It was a brilliant concept and it clearly works. 100%. No, I think it's, it's such a good thing that you said about obviously landscape shifted today. Uh, as someone who I launched my brand three years ago and it was, I kind of in one way wish I could ease into it because we had to launch in hundreds of store day one, the brand, the minute the brand launched. And not only was it a little bit difficult because... You have all these stores, but I was also in COVID stuck in London um, and I couldn't even visit the stores for two years. Um, so yeah, building the brand remotely was not the easiest, but um, it is sometimes important to build it step by step. And uh, I think a lot of founders today are obsessed with getting full distribution and growing so quickly. And actually sometimes it's, it's okay to like ease into it, learn the tricks and the traits and just slowly move into the right place because it's not it's not like a race <laughs> you know you can get a huge order which i'm sure you got but it also has to sell through so exactly. don't get yeah 
you can get a huge return if it doesn't sell. So a huge order doesn't mean it's going to sell. No. A huge order is a, a good, you know, you have to, it has to be the right product. It has to be in the right environment. And you have to, it just, it's more complicated than just putting it in a store. And I, I think I, I want to say, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I think I remember listening to Maureen Kelly, the founder of Tart Story, and mm. I believe it was Ulta, but it might have been Sephora, where she said when they were launching her makeup line, they were like, all right, we need 500 stores. She's like, how about five? <laughs> She's like, I don't have inventory. And they, they came to a deal. She's obviously built an incredible brand, but it, it's hard to grow so quickly when these brands are so established, which is why Peter Thomas Roth really succeeded yeah, got the opportunity to grow alongside Sephora. Exactly, and and, and uh, I really see and it Sephora as... grows into Coles and stuff like that. It's also yeah. you know, one hundred stores here, two hundred stores, three hundred. It's a slow, it's a slow growth too. It's easier. So don't feel like you got to get all doors immediately. No, I, I, it's like you know, be careful what you wish for, right? Like you, you, the 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 journey starts not by entering, but it's when you're in it. And then the, the yes. whole, you've got to, you know, people, it's like even going to college, right? You, you, people obsess about getting into the dream college. And then it's like, okay, but now the work starts. Uh, you could, you could fail, you could leave, you know, you have to, to make sure you deliver. Uh, yes, so but it's very important. remember a lot of brands don't get in. So. <laughs> exactly. And that's okay as well. And that's, that's important for people. You can you know, keep knocking on that door. You'll get in exactly. eventually if the product sells. Exactly. Um, so that's it's and distribution wise globally, um, how is your current mix today? We're Sephora, um, Mexico, Canada, China, Southeast Asia, and then we have some distributors in Europe and London and in in a few European countries. Yeah. So we're pretty we're pretty globally mixed, but not everywhere. And in the U.S., between yeah. Sephora, Ulta. QVC. Yep. We're basically oh, yeah. um, pretty solid <laughs> where you, in the United States. Where, where, you, where, you, where you want to be, you, you are. Well, well, also, Ryan, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, your role because I know uh, as someone, I actually, when I, work, I used to work at Dior and Estee Lauder, and my role at the time was influencers. And uh, it's a very important topic, as we know. Uh, it can also be quite a scary topic for a lot of brands because it can be very expensive without knowing fully ROI, etc. But um, you guys have had huge successes and viral moments. So tell us about you coming on board and sort of some of your learnings in your role. Definitely. I mean, this brand, as you know, was founded in 1993. So it was a time when the word influencer meant absolutely nothing. Yeah. So it's been kind of what has kept the business alive is how nimble we are and how quickly we are to adapt to changing market, changing consumer, where we're meeting the consumer. And now, as we all know, we're meeting the consumer a lot on TikTok and Instagram and seeing what our favorite people, what products they're using. And that's really kind of driving the consumer decision-making process. So since I've been here, I kind of started um, in the influencer space exclusively, which has been really fun. I started in um, just after we had our viral moment on TikTok, which is kind of one of the coolest things that, at least in my lifetime, I think happened to the brand. I don't know if you remember, it was this older woman with yeah. about 500 followers on TikTok posted a live before and after. 71. Um, 71 followers, sorry. She posted a live before and after using our Instant Firm XI product, which is a product that has been in the franchise for, had been about 12 years old at the time. 12, she bought it at Sephora. Old. She bought it at Sephora. She brought it home and she tried it. And that video was just like the perfect, the perfect art and science to it. Whatever it was went super viral. 43 million. I remember, I remember million seeing million. it. It was so visible, the difference, I remember, yeah. Yeah, so that was just a crazy, and it was one of the first true TikTok made me buy it products, which was cool. We've spoken, all of our reps at TikTok, like that was one of the springboards to that phenomenon, and we really felt it as a business instantly. I remember I was in Europe at the time and saw it at half a million views at around nine in the morning Europe time. And by the, by the time I sent it to the 
um, PTR team in the US, by the time they woke up at around eight, the product was basically sold out at every retailer in the country that sold it, which was crazy. And our, our manufacturing facilities essentially paused everything else to figure out what we could do to just crank out as much product as, as we could. We had a wait list. We had the retailers begging for more and more um, backup orders. We're waiting for tubes. We filled all our tubes and we shipped it out so immediately. They were, they were, we were switching the color of the tube, the caps, the whatever we could at the time. Yeah. So I joined just around then, which was a really, really cool time to, to show that influencer marketing definitely works. Um, and we didn't give it to her. She did it on her own. She did it on her own. Exactly. Which is so, actually the best part that, that shows. Yeah, or very organic. Control. Organic. Yeah. Totally organically. So yeah. that was a really, really, really cool phenomenon that um, I was lucky to have gotten to live. And then I started seeing what I could do. I, my first project was echoing that and reaching out to more creators that don't look like what we would exactly envision our typical beauty creator to look like. Yeah. So thinking outside of the box, reaching out to some of the grandmas of TikTok, some of the um, other creators that were relevant at the time. And they were, it was cool because there were creators knocking down our doors. All of my favorite influencers were now reaching out and saying, I can't find this product anywhere. Can you please send it to me? So the echo and the stitching and the duetting and the reaction videos to this video will were what really amplified the effect that it had on our brand and on the, the cyber community. And it was really funny because it first started with a good product and then it was like dying out, you know, as a product lifestyle. And then Dr. Oz put it on his show as his 10th favorite. He did it before and after live. And um, it was 10 favorite products. And then we also had like 2010. Yeah, like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And it, threw, it went through the roof then. And then it was just going again, like, and then Trini, and then if not for that Sephora cast member giving it to Trini, because Trini goes, do you have anything for my under eye bags? And she goes, yes, I have this perfect product. But if not for her, it wouldn't have gone viral because how would she find that in the entire store? So we got very lucky. It might not have gone viral. It might not even be in, in, in our SKU assortment anymore, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. That's the power of TikTok and social media. And I think it, it just shows um, it might be around the corner. But usually when I hear these stories, it's never planned or uh, there is a form of some, I guess, gifting or whatever. It might be needed, a, a kickstart, if you will. But you can't cu curate it, you know. I'm you sure even after in your influencer strategy, you're trying to find another another one. But it's hard to do, right? We, we had like, uh, how many, like three or four that went to two, three, four million, five million. We, but not like her. We had another one at 15 million. I think it was really about the time and place. It was a three minute video. And if you remember, yeah. it was August, July, August of 21. At the time, you couldn't toggle yeah. through TikTok. You had to watch. I don't know if you remember how frustrating it was. If you wanted to see the end yeah. of the video, you had to sit through and watch it. Yeah, so you that kind of build up and effect. Everyone was sitting through all three minutes of the video. The finish rate was like unbelievable when we got the insights. Um, so that's really what I think it was just the perfect time and place. And people weren't really pushing products through TikTok. There wasn't a clear brands weren't even on TikTok yet. There wasn't. It was it was a totally different time. Yeah. So but were you guys on TikTok at that time? We were in a small way. Yeah. Mostly Instagram, right? Mostly. That was yeah. the priority. It, yeah. Across the industry, the priority was Instagram. For, sure. for, for me, I think one of the biggest issues I can see with going viral, of course, there's so many positives, but it's that supply chain strain uh, and how to you know, keep up with that demand operationally. Um, what advice would you give if someone goes viral tomorrow, sells out? What should they do? Like, you know, keep calm, panic, not panic. And then what should they do? Because you don't want to over forecast and create a lot more and then not have that sustained demand, right? Buy a stock bottle. Mm, yeah. You could get a white stock bottle. Yeah. But you I can't, think. you can't, you can't predict it. You could order yeah. 5,000, you could order 200,000 units and a million units and they'll sell through or they won't. 
you don't know how that moment will last. By the time you get it in, and it's three months later, and supply by the time it's in retail, so that moment is gone. It's it's gone. No, Could be I, gone. I, I, I think one thing you said earlier, which I think is a good lesson, is like um, just make sure you have really strong partners like your stakeholders so people that you, you can call your lab your chemist and just say hey can we work together to solve this because you need to have everyone helping you in those moments to find solutions and everyone will win right your retailers will win your your lab will win because they'll get more orders we have our own anyway, lab yeah. so manufacturing oh. for us we can bypass yes. everything so the only thing we'd be waiting for are chemicals or bottles or tubes yeah and so once yeah. we get that and then we we we're pretty big company, so now we we stock a lot of our bottles and caps and tubes. Um, yeah. We have a lot in inventory in case something does, you know, go exceptionally get exceptionally popular, so we don't have to wait for new ones to go, and we just have to fill it. But we do have, you know, missing ingredients right here and there, and a missing cap here or there. That happens. So, so it happens. We, but we're we're lucky. We're vertically integrated. I don't think a lot of other beauty brands in the space. <laughs> that's what makes our formula so powerful is we don't have to um there's no other hurdle and layer we can put the strongest quality of ingredients that's safe for their skin in all of our formulas without worrying about that middleman paying that premium yeah it just shows and i think uh one thing i wanted to ask you guys was um your personal favorite products uh so what are some of your favorite ones in the range you go first a tough question because I, I keep the craziest assortment of products but i'm a huge fan of our max complexion pads they're also margot robbie's um favorites Amazing. but they're uh, a, a little bit of an older product that we've repackaged and reinvigorated but it's an acne salicylic and glycolic acid peel pad and it just it your skin feels so much better it takes anything off your skin it's if you have leftover of some fake tan, this just instantly wipes it away. <coughs> uh, it's a fantastic product. Amazing. And one other thing, both our faces are like little laboratories. So we're already doing 2024 and 25 in our faces. So we don't that. have a favorite routine. I mean, we'll go to like water drench. We use as a moisturizer all the time. I do. I know you do too. And the orange cleanser, the anti This is your gel. favorite product for you. Well, you have to wash your face. So we have like yeah. two, three cleansers. So I use this one all the time and have yeah. oily skin. And then um, I have my entire acne line in my medicine cabinet. So if I need the mask, the sulfur mask, or I need, you know, the whatever, the pads, or if you have acne, the trick to acne is you can't stop using the product yeah. because That's it also kills it and prevents it from reoccurring. So you got to kind of put it all the time. And then when I'm trying new products, it's kind of hard because, you know, they um, I need the salicylic acid, so to speak, to keep that under control. That's what it's sad for you <laughs> that I'm in my 20s and um, my dad's a couple of years older than me and he's the one that has acne. I don't have acne. <laughs> so I can be a little bit more experimental with my skincare and heavier creams and yes. he can't. Yes, I love the winters though are good when it's really cold here in New York. Yeah, my skin does get dry, and that's what I really put on my heavier creams and really feel them. In the summer, I don't do it. No, for anyone sitting under a rock and is not familiar with the full Peter Thomas Roth clinical skincare range, um, could you like share a little bit of an overview or a snapshot of what people can find if they came to your physical space, like say Sephora, Wall Bay, or something? Well, you could both answer this differently, probably. So we try and make it easy for the customer to read. It's Sephora, let's say. And um, we have a lot of eye patches. They're hot. You know, Max, Max, masks were hot. They still are important. Um, we're really a problem solution. But we also have our biggest sellers, Water Drench Moisturizer, um, which is just a really nice light hyaluronic acid moisturizer. So I think you could find anything you want. People always ask me, well, what should I do? And I go, mm, why don't you look at the line? Because it's like you need vitamin C, right, to live. Mm -hmm. Some people like it in their orange juice. Some people like it in um, their grapefruit juice with a lemon. Some people want a strawberry. Maybe someone wants to take a pill. So that's five different ways you would 
get vitamin C. It's the same with skincare. Some people go, oh my gosh, I have to have a peptide or I want glycolic or, or I have to have retinol. What do you have in the retinol? You know, so a lot of times when you start talking to the customer, they narrow it down and then it becomes easier for them to navigate. My opinion. What about you? I think a lot of us were known to the younger crowd as the brand with the eye patches. We have, I think, six or six or seven, six or seven different eye patches, and those have gone really viral on TikTok. I feel like it's a, a trend to be using your eye patches when you're getting ready to catch fallout and makeup, and then make your um, under eye makeup application even more seamless. So those have become a real hit across celebrities, influencers, especially our 24 karat gold eye patches. Oh, uh, sure. Um, with Vogue, the other thing. Uh, sure. Lindsay Lohan, we did a big campaign with her because she was an organic brand fan, which was a lot of fun. Then we're also kind of the brand with the blue moisturizer um, to a lot of consumers, which is our water drench moisturizer. The moisturizer in blue, the, bo- the, bo- the jar is blue. The jar, yeah, the moisturizer is not blue, the jar is blue. And I think Amazing. that's what we're, and of course, our viral um, Instant Firm XI product is something we've become pretty known for. And we, we're constantly coming out with new. Uh, I right. think we have two th- items that are original, cucumber gel mask and sulfur cooling mask. They were from 93. Can you imagine? Oh. We might have one or more. I can't remember. It's a long time. That's, that, so, I mean, you're talking about the future as well. Like what's sort of on the horizon that you can share not necessarily in a product perspective, but just, yeah, what's in the pipeline? I think, I mean, what you're saying is reintroducing ourselves as um, as the quick fix skincare brand with the most effective formulas. So I think that's going to be consistent throughout our messaging going forward is coming to us meeting us at the gondola at your local Sephora store and you can find um, however you want to address your skincare concerns, we have the solution for it and understand that it is really going to work. So I think once you try our products, you really fall in love. There's more than, you know, to some people just know us for our eye masks and that's fine. We love it. Or our um, instant firm X eye product, but to really dive deeper and, to just comfort the consumer that they're going to find a solution for whatever they need in our lives. And what's great, every one of my products or our products um, stands alone. So you could buy one product and you don't need to buy the whole line or you don't have to go anywhere else and dive right in. So we are good either way. If you have your favorite 10 products and you're just missing eye patches, come, you know, or you, you need a cleanser, we got one. <clears throat> That's the way I always sold it. Everyone's a hero product. There's no system here. And I don't, I never like yeah. those systems. I, I but systems right. are good for other people, just yeah. personally, yeah. then it don't work for me. Yep. I actually personally prefer exactly the way you've built your business because I like to pick and mix from other brands and I don't really have a routine, as of say, that I, I'm so strict by. It's more, for me, it gets quite confusing to shop when there's a full ritual and you feel very pressured to buy the whole thing otherwise you don't know if you can pick and mix um and i think 100 percent having tried your products all of them are my favorite if that makes sense there's not one that i like more but they all have very different um needs i haven't tried obviously i only tried maybe like 10 percent of the range because i only take in what i need i don't have certain skin concerns that um, need certain products but um your vitamin c range is like Every single product so, level that range. It's the and best. That, that happened. Can, yeah. That happened because of technology change. Because vitamin C turns mm-hmm. brown, so our new vitamin C doesn't turn brown. So that's just that's brand new. We reformulated everything yeah. with it. But when you do, uh, when you go to another company and they give you six products, a lot of people like that because they don't have to think. <laughs> <laughs> but my our brand is not about thinking. It's about really smart customers who go deep dive into what's in it. And we have the skincare people who are a little more, more knowledgeable or ask for certain things that they want. It's just heavily, it's really good. I always say it's kind of like, you know, when you get an apple pie and it's like, well, you might not know, but in Vermont or something, you know, you get to the local place, right? Yeah. And they make it and it's kind of the crust is kind of 
falling over and a little burnt on one side and just tastes so good because it's fresh. And then when you go to the supermarket, it's kind of frozen. It's also good. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But ours is like the one from Vermont. You know, we home grow everything and make everything here in our own uh, manufacturing facility and I try and make it look like, you know, a homemade apple pie with the best ingredients and feels the best. And that's the goal. Now I'm even more in love with your brand because I had no idea that you, you do it all like in-house and have your own facilities. And it makes total sense because when you look at the formulas as a product junkie, I know it's nothing white labeled and it's nothing I've seen before, but now it makes total sense. So I'm hoping people listening would now I have a bit more of a affiliation hearing the story and the journey. So guys, we're going to go into fire round questions. This is first thing that comes to your mind. Um, I'll start with Peter each time and then Ryan. So you have a bit more time, Ryan, to think of your answer. My first question. You should do it the opposite way. I know, I should. Just kidding. But, you know, but it's, uh, well, you know what? I'll change it up each time. That, that's fun. Okay, so Peter, what's another beauty brand that you're currently loving right now? My Two favorite fragrances might be one of the Prada ones um, in the silver. I don't even know the name of it. I've been buying it for five I years. Know, in the I silver. Know what you're talking about. It's. Uh, I know. What and you're there's an, about. and there's another one. I forgot the name. I really should remember. It's been sitting there. For, it's yellow. It's lemon. It smells so good. And vanilla is my absolute favorite. But I don't wear vanilla. I love vanilla. Ooh, but vanilla. if you have a vanilla shampoo. I, <laughs> Um, I don't know. Yeah, and then I just, you know, I buy drugstore toothpaste and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do too. Uh, right? I, I know you're well, a beauty junkie, so it might be quite hard. I'm definitely a beauty down. junkie, so it's really hard to narrow it down. But two brands that I'm loving right now are K18. Yeah. It's just done an exceptional job in the space, so I'm a big fan of that. I think Patrick Ta has done really well too. The founder story is so clear. The problem solution is so clear and his products, I don't wear makeup, but from everything that I see all over TikTok has done such a great job, just kind of fixing a lot of problems and telling a cool story. My next question, I'll start with Ryan. Uh, what or where is your happy place? That is such a good question. Is it cheesy if I say Sephora? <laughs> no, I and mean, no one said that, uh, so that's such a great answer. <laughs> I, I love Sephora. I I mean, that goes back to the no work-life balance because it really is how I I find myself enjoying my time. But I love traveling too, so I could say on a plane. I love that Sephora. I've had like maybe 100 plus Sephora brands on this podcast and I'll send this to Artemis. I'll be like, look what Ryan said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Peter? Actually, I like that airplane one because I go on an airplane and you turn off your phone. And I, the Wi-Fi never works for me. I don't know why, which is really nice. It's a nice five-hour break from the world and watching a few movies. Yeah. Um, I like shopping online anywhere. Cause yep. I, I, but I do go in, in store still. So that's your happy place So on your iPad? No, maybe. I don't know. I on a beach? Well, I, I, no. I, 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 maybe just, just say, at home. Peter's um, happy place is Sephora.com and Ryan's is Sephora brick and mortar. <laughs> brick and mortar, there we go. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, the next question, Peter, is what is your hidden, or maybe not so hidden, talent? Hmm. We both we both have been liking to um, um, kind of decorate our house. And I would say decorate is a loose word, including construction. I like doing construction and floors I'll and walls. I'll this for you. You, you. He has a very, an unbelievable memory yeah. for nothing besides floor plans. <laughs> he can remember exactly what a floor plan looks like. He should have been in real estate, frankly, but he's done do. a great <laughs> job in skincare. But he cannot remember, like, my best friend from when I was five years old's name, but he can remember walking down the street what the the floor plan in this apartment looked like and where the master bedroom was laid out. That's your your. I know, isn't it weird? That is so fun. I, love I do. That. When I, if I look, visually see it or walk through it, I can remember it. But so, not. I can't. If you ask me to recite a poem, no, you can't do it. Yeah, but I could recite drawing a floor plan. I, I, I'm I should have been an architect. When, I was about to say architect interior. Design, there's a few industries that would I be never very thought useful. about it. By the way, ever. Yeah, it's been a hobby. <laughs> I think that's been a hobby. 
That's... Like it never crossed my mind in college. Yeah. Uh, and how about you, Ryan? What's your hidden talent? Um, I don't know. I speak a, a handful of languages, which I think is pretty rare for Americans. So, mm -hmm. And it comes easy to him. And it comes pretty easy. Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. How many that's good... are we talking? I speak Spanish, French, and Hungarian. Oh, wow. Okay, you got me beat. I speak Spanish and French. I don't speak okay. Hungarian. And I don't speak go. Hindi. I wouldn't should. expect you to. No, I, um, no exactly. Yeah. But I should speak my own native. Yeah. Like, yeah, I should, but I, I, I understand that counts. I'm halfway there. So that counts. But, yeah. Oh, understanding yeah. is very important because if you it decide is. to learn it, you're so far ahead of the game. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, my last question, guys, uh, I'll start with you, Ryan. Um, if you weren't in the beauty industry, what would you be doing right now? That's a really good question. But since I'm tangentially, I deal with the other side of talent management a lot of the time. Hmm. So I feel like that could be, would be a cool industry to be in is managing talent. It'd be nice to be on the other side of the negotiations every once in a while. Yeah. That's it. Well, would you ever want to be the talent as well? I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I don't think so. But I love. Yeah. I love what I do. We have him on QVC with me. There you go. Do we do and I've seen you. I think I've seen together. you on a few of the TikToks, right? On, on yeah. The, on yeah. TikTok. Yeah. So I seen. Yeah, you're, you're there. Uh, and, and how about you, Peter? What would you be doing if you went in this? Industry? I would be. I would be working at Sotheby's or Christie's within the art department. I think it's so much. I love going to museums, but I love going to Sotheby's and Christie's because you could actually. Buy something you see in a museum, you can admire it, but you can't take it home. I just that's think true. that's so cool. You can come take it home with you. How I fun is that? You, I I wish you were in London right now because um, I'm literally going now after this podcast. There's the whole freeze and art. The, everyone art is here right now. But yeah, but guys, it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I'm, I'm sure we're going to have to catch up in, in person in New York or if you're ever in London soon. But for those that want to continue following you guys' journey, what's your either personal and also brand social handles? Oh, our brand is Peter Thomas Roth Official. With the blue check. <laughs> and then... My dad's is Peter Thomas Roth, just with plain in mind. Blue check. Ryan Thomas Roth with no blue check. Yeah. <laughs> you could pay for the blue check, but you don't. Yeah, yeah I, I could. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was I, having. I'd rather spend it at Sephora. I was having exactly. a lot of. Probably. No, I was having a lot of imitators, so that's why I got the blue check. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a lot. It's important. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like. Yeah. But thank you so much for having us. Guys, yes, this was so much fun. I, I love your concept guys. of doing this, and I can't wait to take go into his apartment and take some of the shampoo and we'll definitely well, use it. Uh, I'll hook you up too.